Hello everyone, and welcome to the Spookulative Wildlife Research Center. <laughs> yes, it's that time of the year again, and as the beginning of our Halloween season, we're taking a look at the imps from the animated series Hell of a Boss. These are lesser inhabitants of hell, and display such varying body features, not to mention such an interesting anatomy, that it will be fun to start off with this one. So please consider liking and subscribing if you like this video. And maybe take a look at some of our other videos from this series, once you're done with this one. And now, without further ado, let's get started. And here we are, once again researching some of the spookier animals out there in the world. I mean, we usually do that anyway, but now we are bringing attention to it and few animals fit the bill for this as perfectly as Parvo Diabolus clavatosaurus, one of the many unrelated animals that have been called by the colloquial name of imps. At a first glance, the appearance of these animals can be quite disquieting, seemingly presenting a mix of both reptilian and mammalian traits. This is a result of them being descended from basal mammals, they avoided competition with other predators by adapting to living in caves and only coming out at night to feed on smaller prey, a lifestyle reflected by the presence of a tapetum lucidus, a membrane that helps them see in low light conditions, similar to what is observed in other cave-dwelling nocturnal hunters, such as the lucifer. In modern times, these animals inhabit arid, rocky regions of the New World, and have evolved into very adept rock climbers. They have strong arms and legs, and their feet are equipped with long fingers that help them grasp the rocky terrain, in some ways similar, but not as specialized as those of animals adapted to an arboreal lifestyle. These fingers are arranged somewhat similarly to those of chameleons, but otherwise almost unseen in animals being separated in two pairs with the reduced thumb being left free. When moving on the ground, and especially when standing bipedally to survey their surroundings, this arrangement can give the impression of these animals having cloven hooves. Their long tail is prehensile, used to hold onto rocks as they move around their environment. It also has two short cartilage projections at its tip, which increases its contact surface to improve its hold. These animals have large horns, similar in composition to those of cows or sheep, as well as those of some extinct dinosaurs, a bone core covered in keratin. These horns are a medium of sexual selection, not based on intraspecies fighting, but on their appearance. They grow on annual cycles, alternately developing a primary black band and a secondary band, the coloration and width of the latter being tied to diverse factors, including testosterone levels, diet and body size. This means there is great variation in the characteristics of these horns, but in general terms the secondary bands of females and juvenile males will be much darker and narrower, while those of reproductive males, such as the one shown here, will be bright white and much wider. Males with wider and brighter bands tend to be the most desirable, correlating with good genes that would give their descendants an advantage in keeping a territory, gathering food, and general fitness. This, however, is not the end of their utility. Once they have mated, imps will stay together and form large family groups, composed of an older mating pair and their descendants, as well as the mates of their descendants in many cases. The variations in sex-based coloration in these species has led to tasks being divided between females or juvenile males and adult reproductive males. The former are in charge of protecting the nest and young, and thus have a reddish-brown coloration, with darker fur streaks, which helps them blend in with their surroundings. Adult males, having a much brighter and contrasting coloration, will be in charge of obtaining food. Imps will occasionally hunt a small prey, which they will catch by surprise and rip apart using their long jaws and conical teeth. A viable strategy, 
but insufficient for their large family groups. Rather, most of their food will be obtained by scavenging or stealing it from larger predators. They use their long forked tongues, evolved convergently with those of many squamates, to track the chemical signals of such predators and follow them until they have made their own kill. Then, imps will act together to distract the predator and steal as much of its food as they can. Due to this lifestyle, family groups can find themselves facing harsh competition in trying to keep the habitat of these large predators to themselves. Whenever two groups of imps engage, they will use their teeth and claws to cause severe injuries on each other. These are, however, survivable, and older members of the pack can be seen covered in whitish scars as the result of previous encounters. While scientifically speaking, this is a well-known and studied species, it is very fascinating that these animals remain relatively obscure to the general populace. This likely has to do with their uncharismatic appearance and them not doing well in zoos, a result of their large family groups and ample territories in the wild. This is not aided by the fact that, in older times, people only saw these animals as curiosities in carnivals and circuses, being exposed as devils rather than animals and thus tying them to this biased outlook, with most people believing them to be nothing but hoaxes. This lack of knowledge reaches the point where many sightings of these animals have had them mistaken for possums of all things. But modern documentaries have allowed these creatures to become much better known, removing the stigma associated with its species. And that's it for a speculative biology look into the imps from Hell of a Boss. This was a very fun episode to work on given the need to completely de-anthropomorphize the original design of imps. In the show, they look like the usual, generic red devil archetype, almost completely humanoid except for a tail, horns, and a few other features. And I've already mentioned that I don't like translating humanoids into primates. Instead, I felt it was better trying to adapt this mix of mammalian and reptilian traits by itself into a non-humanoid animal. And what better option than basal mammals? And while that was easy enough, figuring out their just wild intraspecies variations was another thing entirely, since these characteristics were not exclusively tied to sexual dimorphism, but varied a ton between individuals, making it a very fun challenge. I'm going to keep talking now, but over some really cool artwork sent by our community. Bye, Imp. All in all, this was a very fun start to our Halloween season, which will feature a lot of episodes that, by the way, were voted on by our patrons and channel members, as well as some really wild stuff I can't wait to share with you. So here's a thank you to everyone who wanted to see this, and to our patrons and channel members for their support. Please consider joining in too if you want to support our channel, see all of our creatures and videos ahead of time, and even help workshop them into their final shape. Or you can just like and subscribe, it also helps the channel a lot. And remember, if there's any other type of creature you'd like me to give the speculative biology treatment in the show, please sound off in the comments below. Thank you all for watching and see you next time on the Speculative Wildlife Research Center.